All right, let's get a sense of what's happening uh, with some markets now. Um, we did get uh, about, after two sessions of positive um, closes, the end of the week, we see the local stock market um, ended lower as investors opted to lock in profits on bellwether stocks um, following the recent run-up in share prices. Um, specifically, the all share index, that dipped by about 0.4%. Uh, That's for the week, um, last week. Undermined by loss in uh, MTN Nigeria, that dropped about 12.3%. Um, so we see there um, red, that's uh, the color for the All Share Index uh, last week, 0.42% down. Uh, we see the trading volume there was uh, quite lower than the previous week, 1.73 billion, down 2.1%. And we see value that was down about 7.8%. Let's look at the sectoral performance now. Uh, we see the, uh, the consumer goods counter, that was the lone loser um, last week. With the banking counter shining 4.149%, even with that um, big move, we didn't get a positive close uh, for the week. And also, we see another financial services uh, counter, insurance, up 8.92%, 0.30% um, for the oil and gas counter. And at the end of the day, um, investors will be wondering how do they beat inflation? You know, at this time, when we're seeing um, the kind of inflation we're seeing right now, it's very stubbornly. Um, hi. Let's um, talk to Mr. Ola today, um, Olegbe. He's the MD, uh, CEO, Arthur Stevens, uh, Arthur Stevens uh, Management uh, Limited. Join us via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Thank you, Lenny. Thanks for having me. Right. So, um, decision day, we're, we're getting that tomorrow from the MPC. We saw a massive 400 basis points hike at the last uh, meeting. What are you expecting? Well, I'm not expecting them to be as hawkish as they were the last time. Uh, but I still suspect that they will probably continue to uh, move the rates, uh, maybe slightly uh, less, less aggressively. Uh, but um, in as much as the, the intention is to continue to target inflation, and inflation levels is at, what, 31% or thereabouts at the moment, so we're not anywhere near what they, what they intend to achieve uh, regarding that. So I think that they will, still, they will continue to move the, uh, move the rate. Of course, they will also be cautious as to the impact uh, the rate might be having on growth, uh, the impact it might be having on uh, manufacturing companies whose cost of, um, cost of production will now have risen significantly due to the uh, cost of financing. So they have to keep an eye on that while still, you know, doing what they can to battle inflation. As we continue to say, uh, tackling inflation has to be a two-pronged approach. Uh, there has to be mon the monetary side, which, which is what they are trying to tackle. And of course, the structural side, which includes doing other things that are not necessarily mon monetary in nature. Uh, taking care of inflation, uh, taking, uh, taking care of the FX uh, side of things, and... Uh, such structural issues also needs to be taken care of in order for us to get to where we are, where we, are, where we intend to be uh, regarding inf inflation levels. Right. Uh, but regarding the FPC, I, I expect um, an uppish move, but maybe, maybe not as aggressively as, uh, as the last time. Right. And, you know, we keep talking about investors, you know, trying to beat inflation um, at this time. That's been happening since 2022. Um, talk to me about how investors in Nigeria can shield their portfolios against this kind of inflation we're seeing. Well, we've, we've seen and, um, you know, em em empirical evidence has shown that um, traditionally in high inflation environments, uh, it is always better to, to, um, to hear on the side of equities because... Um, Empirical evidence have shown that over, over time, equities tend to, beat, uh, tend to beat inflation. And I think that that has been true for, uh, for equity, equity investors in Nigeria for the last, say, one and a half years. Uh, and I suspect that that will possibly continue to be true, at least until the point where we get inflation rates down to maybe levels looking like 20% or 19%. Uh, so if I was an in an investor, I would continue to uh, uh, look at good fundamentally strong stocks and position there in the hope that the, the returns they make help me to beat inflation. Um, of course, you know, an investor also has to continue to pay attention to the likely impact of the increase in interest interest rates on um, on uh, equity prices because I mean obviously those two markets have an inverse relationship. So okay. as you see interest rates continue to rise, 
likely, it is very likely that uh, participation and the sort of bullishness you are seeing in the equities market will start to subside uh, as, as people start to shift assets from the equities market uh, to, the, um, to the fixed income market. But I mean, we are probably not gotten to the point where uh, the fixed income market will be able to compete with equities regarding uh, the ability to, to beat inflation. So okay. for, for our investor, I will continue to, to, to side with equity for now. For until, now. Until the point where we get to levels, uh, reach the levels that can compete. Okay. All right. Uh, another issue um, right now, we're seeing, you know, top central banks have been accumulating a lot of gold at this time. See the central bank, uh, they bought about, most of the top central banks, they bought about 1,037 tons of gold. People's Bank of China added roughly... 390,000 um, tons of gold in February, and gold hit a new high. That was um, last week, hovering around the $2,162 um, level. So talk to me, um, is this a cue for investors to start looking towards gold at this time? If you're a long-term investor uh, and you're looking for an asset that, is, um, that, is, uh, that has long duration, that have low risk, and, uh, you know, uh, you are looking to, 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 to diversify your portfolio, then gold might not be a bad idea for you to hold. Uh, you agree with me that we're in a world of crisis, that there's crisis everywhere. There's the Ukraine-Russia war, there's, there's Gaza. Uh, the world is, is generally battling inflation. Uh, so investors will typically, well, central banks typically will, will look at all of this and, uh, you know, want to, want to uh, Take some precaution against having um, against having uh, uh, reducing their exposure to uh, to fiat currencies, fiat reserve currencies such as the U.S. dollar and right. the uh, and the euro. So, and that's why you are you are probably seeing some of the central banks moving some of their assets, particularly long asset, long term assets, towards gold uh, because uh, you know gold reduce reduce the risk that could come from. The weakening, the weakening right. of some of these fiat currencies. Right. All right. So if, okay. the, if the U.S. dollar is weak, is weakened, and um, the bulk of your reserves is in the, in the U.S. dollars, then you are exposed. All right. But if you move some of these assets or diversify some of these assets into gold, then you, at least it protects you and gives you the kind of diversification you're looking okay. for. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alatunde Amolibe, MDC after Stevens Asset Management uh, Limited. It was great having your perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Lady. Thanks for having me. All right. So we'll keep tracking the price of gold uh, for this week and um, the local boss uh, right here. But that does it for Business Morning. I'm going to hand things over now to the Sunrise Daily team. Thank you.